thank you for having me in this uh, wonderful meeting and actually the the topic that i am tackling is asymptomatic non-obstructing calicial stone it's the opposite than all the options that thanos discussed so i think it is controversy to treat or not to treat and at the same time we should decide it's a patient selection or a surgeon or a doctor decision. Before going into details, let us to understand what is the magnitude of the problem. It's almost 8% of population having these asymptomatic or incidentally discovered calicial stones. And the average size is five millimeter, sometimes bigger, usually in the lower calyx, but can be in any other calicial system. Why the discovery is more? Because I believe in our routine daily practice, we are using the radiological imaging more frequent than before, either ultrasound or CT scan, either requested from our end or from emergency department or from our colleagues from internal medicine. We try to understand how the brax of uh, ultrasound used with a quick survey done by the Arab School of Urology through a 38 healthcare facilities, including 50 two physicians, both urologists and other specialists, and we found that 40, 34% of those are using an office-based ultrasound. So you have your ultrasound in your clinic, you can check your patient coming with a renal pain or any other reason or for the prostate, and you can find a stone in his caliceal system. So in office, ultrasound is commonly used, and this is the reason why we are discovering more and more asymptomatic caliceal stones. And even the CT scan, which can be requested for another re reasons, we can found that about 80% of those patients requested for CT scan coming with incidentally discovered calicial stone. So in this situation, to treat or not to treat, it's a controversy and it's challenging. If you look in the favor to treat, because if the patient asking you, I have a stone, it will grow, it will make induce problems, it will induce in the future something. So you don't have a clear answer because yes, it can grow up. Yes, it can induce infection. Yes, it can induce pressure or it can move from the, the, the silent position. So to favor in the treatment that you have to avoid the, the asymptomatic stone to be converted into symptomatic stone or inducing complication. On the other <coughs> side, if you expose asymptomatic patient to intervention, either mini perk or whatever uh, rears or whatever shock wave, you can get some complication unnecessary or you converting this patient from asymptomatic into symptomatic because none of our intervention procedure without any side effect or any adverse event. So let's to go quickly through some studies that trying to evaluate the, the, the sequence of those patients with asymptomatic stones. In this study in Journal of Indurology, including 300 patients with asymptomatic stones and they follow up those patients for three years and half of those were located in the lower calyx and the size is almost one centimeter and what they found the result 61 percent experienced stone growth and 50 percent developed some kind of pain but only 25 percent required intervention so now it's again the controversy if you have 75 percent can stay without symptoms and 25 percent only will will need intervention so which direction Another study with 110 patients, follow up three years, size is seven millimeter, and the same only 19% requiring surgical intervention. So majority of those patients can be kept without intervention. Longer follow up for about four years, and we can see the same results almost, not a single patient required intervention within the first two years, and suggesting the early observation uh, is very reasonable uh, 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 for those patients. In the other study in, in British Journal of Urology, 7% requiring uh, surgical intervention and significant spontaneous passage rate is about 20%. Keep in mind that those patients, you offer them surveillance or, or, or conservative treatment, they can pass the stone spontaneously if it is not in the, mainly in the lower calyx. So the rationale to treat behind that is that the lower pool stone have low spontaneous passage rate. So if you have a patient with a lower caliceal stone, yes, it can grow up, it can stay longer time, so it will not pass spontaneously. And at the same time, the untreated stone, it can grow up in size. 
and it can induce symptoms in, in the future. And those patients will ask you, how I follow up this soon? Or you have to offer your patient a surveillance or follow up. So how many times you need to see the patient? How many X-ray or how many CT that you need to follow up? So what is the protocol, especially those patients with comorbidity or elderly patient that needs for you are uh, uh, have a risk to develop a complication. So this is the point that when we decide sometimes to treat the patient to uh, with asymptomatic stone to avoid growing the stone, developing symptoms or developing complication and the fear that it will not pass spontaneously. And honestly, if we go for intervention for those asymptomatic stone, again, we have the three modalities, either shockwave or PCNL or uh, 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 rears. And we can see that, uh, uh, that, that each modality have its own risk and adverse events. And there is no clear consensus for these not asymptomatic calicial stone, which modality will, will offer you the best results. Because at the end, if asymptomatic patient you need to treat, you have to offer him a high rate of stone free. Because if he is asymptomatic and you still keep a residual fragments for this patient, it's another uh, challenge. So uh, uh, to treat, uh, we, we look to the other side. When we treat, what is the complication or the adverse events that it may happen? And what is the stone free rate? Because again, we can see that with shockwave uh, 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 and the retrograde intrarenal surgery, we can find that 90 to 92% patient is stone free. But you have still 10%. You expose him to a surgery, he paid a lot of money, and at the end, he still have some residual, or you didn't get him a stone free. So this is the, 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 the patient perception about he has a symptomatic stone, and he still have residual fragments, and he exposed to a surgery. Look to the side effects or the adverse events of this surgery, nothing is 100% safe. We can see for retrograde intrarenal surgery, still we have up to 14%. Uh, 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 complication is variable in severity from mild to moderate to severe uh, injury and for shockwave about 6% have some complication. Look to uh, the PCNL and ESWL and here looking to the scarring we can see with the shockwave the renal scarring uh, reach up to 16% so again we are exposing patient to some adverse event those asymptomatic calicial stones. So at the end it should be shared the decision that how to treat or not to treat, either patient preference or your decision. And we have to keep in mind the risk and the benefits for intervention and keeping the patient preference and the realistic expectation about the outcome, how the patient will be a stone free rate. If you look to the European guidelines, observation is, is a recommendation endorsed by the AEU for asymptomatic calicial stones mm -hmm. with treatment reserved for patients with uh, developing symptoms. And I believe that in our uh, hospital, on my hospital, we adopting the same uh, uh, um, uh, recommendation that we are keeping only treatment for those developing symptoms and asymptomatic stones, especially those small in, in the lower calicial stone, we keep them under surveillance or observation and preventing many unnecessary invasive procedures. But what we hope in the future, and actually this is what I need to, to, to hear from all of you, we should have like a scoring checklist in our routine daily practice. Because when the patient referred to me from my colleague from other specialty with these findings in the ultrasound or CT scan, how can confidently to tell him you need to treat, be treated or not based on multiple factors? We, not, we need, I believe this is an era of research that we should work on it regarding to this, not only the stone size, the stone size, type, location, the anatomy of the pelvic calcial system, the angle between the pelvis and the calices, and the patient age, patient other comorbidity, and even uh, patient preference, because if patient psychologically can adapt that he live the rest of his life with a stone in his kidney, with so some patients cannot accept that. So we should consider the patient preference or, or patient occupation. If he's a pilot, he's traveling, so he cannot be exposed to, to a sudden uh, renal colic in, in, in urgent situation. And at the same time, which treatment modalities should be the, the best for this asymptomatic calicial stone? So if it's five millimeter stone, I should go for mini perk or should I go for uh, uh, rears or shockwave? So 
again, there is no clear standard for such uh, things, and I believe this will be a good era for research that we can work on it. And thank you, and again, this is my uh, reminding for the annual conference, uh, hopefully to see you. Thank you.